I was recently asked by a member of a camera club in relation to preparing images for camera club competitions if he could make a preset from the crop tool. Well, the answer is yes, you can, and I'll show you how we can do that in a few moments. Within my video set, which I called Photoshop for Amateur Photographers, I made a video, video 13, called Export Preset. That's probably the best way I've found to create images for camera club competitions, or in fact, any other type of project. However, let's take a look here at making a preset using the crop tool. Whenever we start the process to crop an image in Photoshop, we would select the crop tool. Generally speaking, that crop bounding box would be shown all around the outer edge of the image, but here it isn't. And of course, to continue the crop, I'd move my cursor within that shape and click. We'd be able to see the rule of thirds, but why is it cutting off a little bit of the left and the right when I've never asked it to do so? Well, that's because there's a few values in the options at the top of the screen. Photoshop will always remember the last values you typed into these boxes, and that's what it's doing here. So not a bad idea. When you select the crop tool, just take a quick look at the values, make sure there's no values there that are gonna interfere with what you're about to do. But of course, we can always clear them from here, but it doesn't clear the crop. If I hit the escape key though, it does. Now, normally when we crop an image, we may be cropping the image for compositional reasons, but here we want to crop the image to meet a certain size that's set by our camera club. Now, generally speaking, that's going to be 1920 pixels on the long side and 1080 pixels in height. But the problem we have is all of the images we're preparing could be slightly different formats and they're very likely to be so. Now let me give you an example of that. I'm looking into the width and height resolution box here and in the little box to the right which is the width of the image I'm going to put 1920 and px to tell the software to measure in pixels but I'm going to click the tick on the options bar to commit that. Now we can see it appears to have done a good job. However, because the image format or aspect ratio is different than the 1920 or 1080, if I go to image and image size, I've got the width set nicely, but the height is too much. We need 1080. So with this image, I would have needed to have dialed in a height of 1080 and allowed the width to take care of itself. Had I done that, I'd have had the correct height, but the width would have been slightly reduced. No problem for the camera club competition, but it's not really something we'd want to set up a preset for. I'm gonna hit Control Z here to undo what I've just done, because if we were setting up a preset, it's likely to be for a set value we're going to use over and over again. So here I am going to commit this and put 1080 pixels in that second box. Now you can see what effect it's going to have on this image. Now, if we were preparing this for a camera club competition, as you can see, it's not going to do a great deal of damage to this image from a compositional point of view. I could drop the image down a little bit to put that rule of thirds line right on the horizon. And you can see that lighthouse in the distance is nicely over those vertical and horizontal lines. So here, it wouldn't be a big deal if I had just hit the tick and committed that crop. But we're interested in making a preset because there's going to be times when maybe we want the exact same thing again. So let's go up to the top left of the toolbox and the option you can see has the symbol of the crop tool. So if we go to the little drop down arrow alongside the crop preset here, I can go across to the little plus sign and click. 
Now we can change the name of this, but it would make sense, I think, to leave it just as it is, or if we wanted to tidy things up, we could just remove the crop, and also that. There's the value that we've just made. So once we do that, I'm going to open up a completely different image, and we'll take a look at how it works. Now I've completely cleared my crop tool of the previous preset because it will remain there until we choose something different. So I'm just simulating the fact that we may have done lots of other work and we're coming back some days, if not weeks into the future, and we want to bring up that preset. Now the preset value was 1920-1080, which we generally refer to as HD size. So what I'm going to do here, this is a completely different picture as you can see, different content, but it'll probably fit quite nicely into that 16-9 aspect ratio, which is 1920-1080. So picking up the crop tool here, I can go back to where we set up the crop, and there's the preset we've made. And of course, we could set up many others if we have the need. But when I click that and click into the picture, there is my perfect size 1920,080. If I wanted to just adjust things a little bit to bring the cheetah, is it a cheetah? It is a cheetah, isn't it? Right down into the crosshairs here and hit the tick. When I go back to my image size, I'm pretty confident we've got our 1920,080. Now, one other thing we can do, many of the images we shoot with our modern cameras are 3 to aspect ratio. So we can do something slightly different here because what we can do is to go to this option and we can choose the 3, 2, although they put it as 2, 3. That's the wrong way round. See those two little arrows there? Let's turn that. So it's taken this image back to the sort of format that it was shot in. And of course, I can commit that, but I can also set that up as a preset. And here, maybe I would just do much the same. So I could have a number of values here of presets that I use quite often. So here we've got 3.2, but I can select 16.9, 3.2, or anything else I choose to set up. Now there is something quite different between the two presets that we've just set up. One we set up with pixel values, which is going to reduce the size of the image. The other one we set up with aspect ratio, and that isn't. Let me demonstrate by going back to my crop tool, going back to my presets. If I select the 1920 and 1080 for this image, you can see we can safely use that. And of course, if I click within it and hit the tick, we can see that it's reduced in size. And we know even before we look at image image size, the preset has worked perfectly. But what I'm going to do here is hit F12 to bring back the previously saved version. So we're back to the high resolution version. So when I go to my preset now and I select 3.2, well, yes, we're going to lose a little bit left and right because the aspect ratio of the image is slightly different to the crop that I've selected. Of course, I can click and adjust it very slightly. Let's assume that that is my choice. When I hit the tick here, the first thing we notice is the image hasn't become small. Because although we lost a few pixels down the left hand edge, all the remaining pixels are left in place, which would be quite crucial if this was intended to be printed. So when I go to image, image size, we can see that this image retains its high resolution even though we've used a crop preset to adjust it slightly. I'll see you next time.